Sri Lanka's uh, Foreign Minister and its Justice Minister, Mr. Ali Sabri, thank you for this interview with Deutsche Welle. I want to first start with the biggest and the most pressing concern of Sri Lanka right now, which is the financial crisis. Now, recently you have been able to have this re debt restructuring deal, uh, but you're facing the criticism now for favoring creditors over the country's uh, economic recovery. Um, now, there's still billions of dollars of debt among you know, uh, multiple creditors, including IMF, your partners like India and China as well. How will the country get on the path of recovery? I think uh, if you look at, thank you for having me first. Uh, if you look at what we were in 2022, uh, everyone will agree, unless you are cussed, that we have made great progress. Tourism is back on track, rupee has strengthened, queues had been eliminated, people have a little bit of money, things are moving. Corporate results are very positive, and after six years, we have a primary account balance. So those are the fundamentals, and inflation is under cover. So in the in the situation going forward, we are not doing it just out of the blue, all based on something called debt sustainable analysis. Debt sustainable analysis we discussed with the IMF and come out with it. So if we work along the line what we have done so far, we have exceeded the expectation. Revenues have to go up and the income has to be careful, the, the expenditure has to be carefully uh, monitored. So things are good, that's why we have a primary account balance. Uh, but debt, when we start to pay the debt in 2028, we will have sufficient funds. If you look at from year on year, our, from 2022 to this year, we will have almost double the revenue which is coming in. Without revenue coming into about 15% of the GDP, no country like Sri Lanka, which is a welfare state, could run. So therefore, we are very, very confident. Uh, if we stick to the reforms that we are doing it, uh, Sri Lanka is well in course for sustainable growth. Yet 25% of its population is below the poverty line. Multidimensional poverty has increased over the last four years. We have seen hundreds of thousands of young children having stunted growth. Again, about 30% of the people are food insecure in need of uh, humanitarian assistance. Now, you have IMF requiring you to have very strict debt repayment terms. Would that mean that these measures that you are saying, the strategy that you are saying in place, is going to ensure benefits to the ordinary Sri Lankans? No, ordinary citizens, the f most important thing is our part of our, 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 our reforms are to roll out a social safety net, which we have done. Uh, most of our funds uh, goes to that. We have stopped all capital expenditure on, on any infrastructure development other than what is very, very important. So most of the funds are going to say, look after the people who are vulnerable. Any country which go through that kind of an economic crisis will take time to go forward. But reform for the sake of reform, taking you through backward, or you want sustainable thing which go take you to the future. We have rolled out something called an Aswasuma program, which covered 2.4 million families in the country, and that provide three times of what we used to pay under the previous Samurdi program in 2021-2022. So we are taking care of them. We have uh, fertilizer subsidiary. That's why the all our four seasons of Sri Lankan paddy cultivation have been very, very good. So there is ample and over-the-top production of rice. So things are okay, but we are not out of the wood. You can't expect that to happen in two years' time. But compared to what we were, we are looking after the poor, vulnerable, providing them lunch, providing them fertilizer, providing them poor education, free health, as well as, some, in some cases, free rice and rations. So all in all, what we want to do is to keep them uh, flute for the next 24 months, which we are doing. So hopefully, uh, by that time, uh, the, the tourism surge will trickle down to the normal people with remittance coming in trickle down to the normal people will the economy grow trickle down to the normal people and when you have more money as revenue after you pay the uh, uh, the, the, the salaries and all those things 
we could direct that to education, food, security and things like that. So all in all, I think Sri Lanka will do well uh, in the years to come. Economic growth and uh, economic recovery also remains the biggest issue in these forthcoming ele uh, presidential elections in Sri Lanka in September. And looks like, uh, from the sound of it, I've spoken to many people on the ground as well, it looks like a divided mandate. How would that reflect on the creditors' uh, uh, confidence in Sri Lankan government? I think yeah, uh, the democracy is always the, uh, always like that. It's divided mandate. Everybody won't think the same way. For the first time in Sri Lankan history, uh, there are three formidable candidates. Uh, so it's not going to be two-pronged race. It's going to be three-pronged race. So it's important. But if you look at yesterday, the Marxist party came out the day before yesterday, launched their um, the, the manifesto. Even in that, they are saying that they will continue with the IMF program. So they don't give nitty gritties and, and, and descriptions of that. But the fact that they will continue with it uh, is a breather. Uh, opposition is also saying the same thing. Of course, government will anyway continue this. So therefore, nothing for the external creditors to be overly worried. Uh, but of course, uh, there is perception in the world and in the business community, the best person to carry through the reforms and get the Sri Lanka out of this is the president himself because he has proven that for the last two years. Yet there may be some challenges there in terms of accountability. I, you're, a, you're justice minister as well. I'm going to talk about uh, the uprising in 2022 when people were out on the roads. We saw uh, the ruling Rajapaksa family flee the country. Now they're back. Uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa's son Namal is a contender in these uh, elections. Uh, there's a criticism of lack of justice and accountability here despite allegations of fraud uh, and money laundering on the Rajapaksa family. What has your government done to address this? No, people can have a lot of allegation. If they have evidence, they must quickly go. We have separate auth auth uh, authorities, CID, the, uh, that's the police office. There is also bribery commission. Anybody has some information, uh, please ask them to go there and lodge that complaint. Government can't do anything on that. We don't investigate. We have institutions here. We, I can't decide tomorrow somebody and because I'm the justice minister, put somebody inside the uh, thing. That's that's a just. But the, surely the courts have found evidence as well of, of uh, so, wrongdoing and mismanagement of funds. Yeah. So that continues. So that that's precisely the answer to your question. Courts have found them guilty. So how do you say that there is no justice and accountability? So there are but people it, who it went... It is a sluggish, uh, you know, there are allegations of sluggish justice not being met. So what can the government do? Sri Lanka is, is a country which is uh, ruled by rule of law. There is independent judiciary, independent institution, independent uh, primary commission. Merely because somebody says during the election, some slogans, that they mean that you can take somebody and put behind bars. But if you have evidence, you can share it and people can go and prosecute it. And there are cases, number of cases filed against uh, so many people. Some succeeded, some did not. Because it's easy to come out with allegations, uh, but difficult to prove. But as far as, in my opinion, economic policies, if there is lack of fraud or anything goes uh, wrong, uh, the remedy doesn't lie in the Supreme Court or any court. It lies in the elections. People will decide your policies have succeeded, I'll give you another term. People will decide your policies are not uh, given the results, you go out. You know, If you try to prosecute people for executing policies, nobody will come to politics. You know, There are two different mandates there. When it comes, of course, exception is fraud, bribery, corruption. If you have, you give them and prosecute them. But otherwise, sometimes that's how it is. If you take in India in time up to 1991, the country was a, a closed economy. So you don't go and prosecute people because you had a proposed economy. That's what they believed. And that's that not equal to the, uh, you know, um, mismanagement of funds or the... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If hmm. there is mismanagement of funds, that's a different thing. If, for example, Allegations of corruptions as well. There yeah, are that's several there billion a... dollars of, uh, of uh, payments that... The 70% of Sri Lanka budget goes to 
recurrent expenditure. That is to pay salaries, interest and loan. Our problem is lack of revenue to support the welfare state. You know in 2022, as a percentage of GDP, our revenue was just 8.2%. The seventh lowest in the world. Who are the above us, below us? was Iran, Venezuela, Sudan, Somalia, and uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, Iran, and Venezuela depends on oil wealth. So we are in the company of Sudan and Somalia, and expecting a country to run that. So our problems are structural. Populist policies, every time they gave it, even now they are doing it. I'll give this free, I'll give that free, I'll cut down on tax. If you cut down on tax and give something free, inflation will come. You have to print money. So these are, of course I won't say that there is no corruption, you have to act on that. Corruption is only just one issue out of hundred issues here. We are the largest public service. We are a welfare state. Our revenue doesn't support it. When we don't have the money, we borrow. And we borrow a larger sum and pay the lesser sum. So it was an eye opener in 2022. President Vikramasinghe had understood that. He had tightened the borrowing. He had increased the uh, revenues. He had expanded the tax net. And he had come out with tangible mechanism to tackle this. And that has uh, yielded results. But of course, we need a little more time to get back on track. I'll now move on to questions related to Sri Lanka's foreign policy. Uh, Sri Lanka hosted uh, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi just weeks before uh, he died in a chopper crash. Um, and this was despite concerns of, uh, you know, a US sanction. Is there a tightrope here when it comes to balancing the diplomatic ties between uh, Iran and the US? Somebody else's enemy is not our enemy, right? And so, therefore, we will take decision based on our bilateral uh, relationship. So, U.S. is a very strong, close friend of Sri Lanka. We are cooperated with it. So is Iran. So somebody has sanctioned against Iran doesn't mean that we can't work with them, right? So Iran is a good friend of Sri Lanka for a long period of time. They have built our only uh, um, petroleum refinery. And he came to open a project, which is 550 million worth of a project, which is a combination of hydropower, um, irrigation, and drinking water. And they constructed that. They funded that. So why shouldn't, uh, why, why would we worried about inviting them? So the other most important thing is different countries have different priorities. For us, most important thing is to continue to remain independent, non-aligned, yet work with everybody. Our policy is friendship to all, enmity to none. So I'm not surprised we'll continue to work with everyone as long as we feel that is good for our country. So how do you ensure that sovereignty given such a strategically important place that Sri Lanka has in the Indian Ocean with competing interests from India, China, US. Uh, now you have uh, a lot of infrastructure development uh, with the help of China. You've had uh, ports that have now has acquisition of stakes by Chinese entities. It has invested in your roads, railways, ports. India has also been your long standing partner, your closest economic partner for a long time. How do you balance this uh, and, and avoid Sri Lanka becoming a battleground of these very competing geopolitical interests? No, we are not a battleground. No one is coming here. We have, there are parameters here. We work with everybody, but those are basically commercial partnership. If you ask Sri Lanka will allow anybody to have their military bases here, no way. Military partnership here, no way. Military exercise, yes. And then open to business, yes. So basically most of these projects, we advertise and call for tenders and bids. So whoever commercially successful will get that. So we can't say that this is open for everyone else other than China, we can't do that. So we, most of these things are projects, where investment comes in. If you look at the Colombo port, we have investment from India, 
Adani Shabir. Hamban Tota Port, for instance, there have been losses incurred uh, by uh, Sri Lanka over uh, over the last uh, many years now. Uh, surely that does not help with the uh, with, with what you're talking about as as sovereignty of the state. No, there is no problem at all. This is also a totally misquoted Western narrative. Uh, Hambantota port is a Sri Lankan-owned port. Its commercial operation had been handed over to a Chinese company at a good rate for Sri Lanka. As a result of which, which was otherwise commercially non-viable, have become viable overnight. So it's a win-win partnership, just like in your country. So many ports have been given for an operation to private sector. Your companies have gone to Israel and taken some of the ports, Iran and taken some of the ports, and come to Colombo and invested in some of the ports. Very good. That's how it should be. So this is similarly, Chinese company had come and taken over. When the Chinese investment comes in, West look at it different way. We don't agree with that. Chinese have been a good friend to Sri Lanka for a long, long period of time. Sri Lankan economy grew faster during 2005 to 2015 than any other period. That was possible because of the Chinese investment came into Sri Lanka. So we are now open to everybody. So luckily now, a lot of people are coming and investing it. So we are not interested in anyone, but we always work as sovereign equals. I think, uh, uh, so therefore, uh, we are not going to be trapped by the Western narratives of our relationship with China. Uh, because for us, all these countries are important. Chinese investment are important. Indian relationship is extremely important, the most important relationship for us. Western countries are important for us in, in our economic recovery because we have shared values on democracy, free speech. So therefore, we will work with everyone. And what about stability if you talk about the military drills uh, that happen in the Indian Ocean, uh, you know, with again competing interests here between uh, with China and, you know, Quad. Uh, there were also a, a discussion on uh, India uh, not liking very much, uh, you know, about these uh, Chinese submarines and, and, uh, and those things. How have you, how will you tackle something like that? Uh, basically, we have had a very transparent mechanism on that. Uh, military ships can come to Sri Lanka. Last week, there was a U.S. military ships coming here, warships. Chinese ships are here, and either today or tomorrow, Indian ships are coming. So that's all fine. So we are a port of call. We are in the middle of the most important maritime uh, domain. So if you are in the most important location, you can't be closing it, then where is the freedom of navigation? We can't have freedom of navigation for one country and not having for the others, freedom of navigation to all. So we will continue to have that. But when it comes to research ship coming to Sri Lanka, uh, there were some concerns expressed. So we ourselves also found out that we do not have the capacity to understand that properly. So we are in the process of developing our capacity and then we will re-look at it and realign toward the end of the year as to we should really... But you have allowed a German ship after months of uh, a research ship after months and months of it docking, waiting. Uh, so it, it doesn't look like a uniform policy for no, all? No, it is a uniform policy. Uh, we, we did not allow the ref uh, any research ships to come to research here. We only allow, uh, we can only allow them for replenishment and ports of call but not for research. Even the Germans were not for research. Right. I'll move on to the question of uh, forced cremation that had become an issue with the GCC member countries. Uh, this happened during uh, the time of COVID. Uh, what's the status on that? And ha they, there was a lot of anger around it. How have you uh, tackled that situation? One is we have apologized at the government. Number two is we are in the process of paying compensation to any com any families are affected. Number three, most importantly, as the Justice Minister, I brought in, um, in the process of preparing a new law in terms of which in future this will never happen. So there will be right for cremation and burial. Only the exception is if WHO comes and says that for the world's benefit or the other's benefit. For this particular kind of thing, you cannot have burial or only cremation or something, then you apply that. So 
we are tackling in, 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 in all those ways. So that was a very, very unfortunate uh, situation. It would have never, ever happened in Sri Lanka. Now, it's been 15 years to the end of war in Sri Lanka. There's always this international uh, uh, need and, and uh, suggestion of an international commission into the investigations of war crimes, talk of uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission as well. Um, but Sri Lanka has always rejected that uh, proposal. Why is that? And what is the status at this point of, uh, 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 you know, meaningful justice being meted out to the Tamil community? I think uh, all in all we must understand we did not fight with the Tamil community. We fought against one of the most ruthless terrorist organizations in the world, which wiped out two leaders, Rajiv Gandhi, and Sri Lankan President Vikram um, Barana Singh Premadasa. So many ministers, Tamil leadership, which perpetuated suicide bombing, carried out 300 suicide bombing, more than that. No one else had done in the, in the past. You just go in and grab small young ch uh, Tamil children, 11, 12, 13 year old, gave them a cyanide capsules and forced them into uh, the action. So we had to fight. You can't allow that to, uh, I mean, some of the country, Western countries are going and fighting in some other countries. Now here is our territorial integrity. We need to do that. But since then, do you know that we have restored peace, have rehabilitated 12,197 LTT carders who surrendered. They are in the part of our society. 96% of the land which was under the military at that time when we were fighting had been given back to the people. So. A lot of things are happening here. The Western countries have this narrative of vote bank politics. That is because some of the diasporas have gone and settled themselves in some of those important pockets where those, their votes count at the election comes. So their entire uh, uh, policy towards Sri Lanka is determined by those diaspora people. We don't agree with that. And we will never allow outsiders to come and interfere in our thing. What we have done? We have come out with a missing persons organization. We call it as Office of Missing Person. Out of 675 people who have complained that their loved ones are missing from 2000 to 2009 during the height of the conflict, 5,776 people have come. So 96% of the people. So that shows the confidence on the Sri Lankan authority. We are working on that. We are in the process of tracing them. We are coming out with the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I have gasseted it. At the, finance minister, at the foreign minister as well as the justice minister and we are in the process of providing a local mechanism. Of course we will provide solution in local mechanism. We are not going to allow somebody else in coming and looking at it. Before the source people who are articulating for that, ask them to go and check their policies towards the Gaza and what is happening in Gaza, who provide them the diplomatic cover, who provide them the arms and the ammunition. Hey, what is the double standard on that? They are talking about something happened on 15 years ago. We are not a apartheid state. We take care of all our children, all our people as equals. In terms of Article 12.1, all Sri Lankans live here, have the equal status. You can go to any part of this country. Yet people in north and east of the country are still waiting for um, their numbers like 100,000 people who... Uh, their allegations of enforced disappearances on Sri Lanka, there needs to be a, a, a commission that needs to set up which uh, investigates and, fair, and have fair trial on these things. But uh, repeatedly the process of justice and reconciliation has failed. What are the reasons for that? Well, how, how do you get that number? Who told you this? It's all rubbish. This is some Western nonsense. In straight, that's what exactly because I told Because you have mass graves uh, being found of course, every mass few... Grave, the, the mass graves and 100,000, how do you come to that position? Now we, that is precisely I told, we have advertised in all the papers and set up a mechanism and got the numbers from the UN, not the number from the ICRC and with all of them, only 6,047 people have complained from 2000 to 2009, their loved ones are disappeared, no one else. You must understand one thing, Sri Lankan forces, 4,000 people disappeared. They were categorized as missing in action. Now they are categorized and killed in action. Because you think that LTT was a very peaceful organization. 
LTT. Sir, I'm not saying that. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying post-war recovery, Pope, there are mechanisms. Th that's what I'm saying. And why has Sri Sh Lanka not uh, uh, No, that under 1,000 is totally wrong. It's only 6,047. We have set up uh, on the um, office of missing person. 97,000 people have gone there. We are in the process of tracing them. We are working with the ICRC and the Swiss government. We can't provide solution to this kind of complex situation overnight. No, about but three, it's been 15 years, sir, 15 now. 15 years? What is 15 years? You ask Canada apologizing for people, for indigenous people after 200 years. You go and ask uh, the, the, the Netherlands returned our artifact after 300 years. So 15 years, a long period of time, we have made great sir, progress. this is a separate, we, we, we can't say what about in uh, No, you know, it is not countries. what about it, sir. It's about take practical situation. 96% of the land has been <laughs> returned. 96% of the land has been returned. 12,197 people have been rehabilitated. We, we constructed the entirety of their uh, infrastructure. And some of the cases have been ongoing. And out of the rest of the people, that's what I am told, Sri Lankan forces lost 26,000 people. Despite that, we did not prosecute 12,197 LTT cadres. So this is a political conflict at that point in time, which went out of hand and became a terrorist organization. So, so why are they pushing us to do the other thing? We have, for the last two years, convicted LTT suspects. Um, the, the um, LTTS, including those who bombed our central bank, who was prosecuted for, he was convicted for 200 years, were given pardon. If there are excesses, if there are areas of violation, we will. And if if that has been a collateral damage, like in any 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 conflict, uh, we we need to come to terms with it. You need to understand, LTT also chased out the Muslims by giving 24 minutes, 24 hours in 1990, 75,000 Muslims were eliminated and ethnically cleansed actually, took it out from it. So people have come to terms with it and live with it. So therefore, they, and they attack all the Buddhist most important location from, from Temple of Tooth to the Anuradhapura shrine and Eliminated so many Sinhalese population. They bombed innocent people. I was a victim of a bomb blast where Mrs. Tandrika Kumar Natunga was defeated. So that is why we must look at it in a way which will bring peace in country, not what the Westerners or the others want from somewhere else. Because we need to live with each other. So, so you were talking about living with each other, but yet in my travels in Sri Lanka, I found there's a lot of development that's happening on the south on the west but there's hardly you don't see big projects you don't see employment opportunities you don't see industries in north and you know parts of northeast uh, in in this country it almost feels like there are two countries within one um, there are also allegations of land grab uh, you know i was talking to a few farmers on the east uh, uh, in Sri Lanka and they they were alleging that uh, you know the military has given their farms uh, to former uh, you know Sri Lankan uh, uh, you know army people or now farmers uh, there, there are these questions some of this has actually gone to the courts as well uh, what do you have to say about that why is there such a mismatch no I do agree the development need to take place in the north and east at the fast pace but if you also go to Sri Lanka, to Mondragala district, you will find the same thing. This is commercial. So people go and invest there to see whether it's commercially viable or not. Because of the distance from the north and east to the Kalambu and also to find the uh, infrastructure there, people are not going there. That is why it's important the diaspora to come and look at this and invest. We will open that. We are looking at, uh, in fact, looking at Indian investment on renewable energy and port development in, 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 in Trincomalee district, port development in Kansanturai, connecting India and Sri Lanka. So there will be four movement to upgrade the standards of living of the other, our southern brothers and there. So it's not that uh, the, the sorry, northern brothers and the sisters there. The issue is that the proximity to Colombo, commercial viability of it and private sector going and investing. But if you also, you would have also uh, in the same trip, would have realized that the roads are in good shape. Public infrastructure are in that. So that's what the government can do. We have done everything. 
government infrastructure is good, roads are good, hospitals are very modern, we have put a lot of money into that. And some of the top hospitals in Kilinochi and, and Kankasanthure and all those things are coming up. So schools have been built, all those things are there. Internet connection is there. That's what the government can do. Beyond that is the private sector. Private sector, look at it, the commercial viability of it. That is where we are asking the diaspora who are doing very well in some part of the world, rather than continue to uh, agitate for a separate state and mislead the section of the Sri Lankans to go through the conflict that we went through, come back. I'm happy that most of them are uh, in, that, in, in that mindset, come look at this infrastructure, invest in the project, create job opportunities so you can uplift your people. DW also came up with a documentary this year and they revealed that a very high-ranking Sri Lankan mili military generals accused of um, um, you know, torture and, 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 and war crimes allegedly, they have served in the UN peacekeeping missions, uh, which is obviously, uh, you know, very paradoxical to the needs of, of, of the UN. Has, has there been any... Uh, comment on that from the UN? Has there been any discussion about that with the UN? No, you know Sri Lankan forces are one of the most respected in the world because at the end of the war you would have seen when the LTT use human shield, I invite you to go through those visuals. When we went and defeated LTTE, the general public who were unfortunate were used as a human shield by the LTT, did not run away from the uh, forces. They ran towards the forces. They knew security and safety lies in the Sri Lankan forces, and we took care of them, because they are our own citizens. And that is why we have a very high standard. There are instances of violations. We will give information. We will follow that up. But pa painting the whole military for one or two people's action in a conflict where 26,000 Sri Lankan soldiers, valiant soldiers, laid their lives, limbs to protect the territorial integrity and also bring peace to the Tamils. You know, during the conflict, the, everyone suffered in Sri Lanka. Close to 10, 15,000 civilians died in this. The mostly suffering took place in North East because that was the theater of the war. The day war ended, the day we eliminated LTT, peace dawned to that place. And, and no one wanted to go to that horrific past. So therefore, he, he, people take out of context. And most of the sources of these so-called allegations are people who have fled the country, seeking refugee status, want to perpetrate it, and come out with some nonsense, including that, uh, that so-called... Uh, Channel 4 documentary. Only source is a fellow who left the country illegally into France and gone to Switzerland and seeking refugee status. They can sell anyone to get greener pasture. We should be worried about too much. So uh, these researches are independent, they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, with research yeah, done you, in the you UK. Send, send us, we will look at it. Hmm. This is not the only thing in Sri Lanka. There are so many good things to talk about in Sri Lanka, not one or two incidents. Sri Lanka, ask your people to come to Sri Lanka and visit and enjoy. Uh, the the hundred thousands of uh, Germans are coming in. Ask them they have found any discrimination in this country. You yourself said that you visited the whole of Sri Lanka. That means we have nothing to hide. Of course, is everyone happy? No. In which country they are all happy? Is everyone want progress? Yes. They want a better life? Of course. So like any other country, Sri Lanka is in work in progress. But one thing must people must understand, Sri Lanka is a democracy. We are governed by rule of law. We are an independent judiciary. And we are answerable to everything. Thank you so much for this interview today Thank and you. for your time.